Guys, in this video, let us look at the cartilages of larynx. Totally, there are nine uh, cartilages. Okay. So basically, uh, how does it have nine? Because it has three unpaired and three paired. Three paired means total six, right? So six plus three will be nine. So it has nine cartilages. Which are the three unpaired cartilages? You have the thyroid, cricoid, and epiglottis. So in this diagram, you can see where is the thyroid? This is the thyroid, right? This is the one of the unpaired. Then you have the cricoid here, right? That is the other unpaired. Then here you have the epiglottis. These three are unpaired. Okay. So epiglottis, thyroid, and cricoid. These are the three unpaired cartilages of larynx. Okay. Then you have paired structures. Paired structures are arytenoid, corniculate, and cuneiform cartilages. Let us see where they are. So here, when you see this diagram, here you can see. These triangular structures, right? These are the arytenoid cartilages. They are there are two of them. Above that, you will have the corniculate cartilages, right? And in front of that, you will have the cuneiform cartilages, which are rod shaped. So, did you understand how there are nine cartilages, three unpaired and three paired? Okay, so let's take a diagram to look at the corniculate and cuneiform a little more in detail. So where is the arytenoid? Here you have the arytenoid cartilage. Above that one circle like that is corniculate. <clears throat> In front of that rod shaped is cuneiform. There will be two of each of these. Two arytenoids, two corniculate and two cuneiform on each side. So you will have total six. Right? So, so totally six. How many? Six paired. Where are the unpaired? Unpaired you can see here. Cricoid cartilage. It's a complete ring. Then you have thyroid cartilage, which is the biggest, and here you have epiglottis. So that will be the these will these three are the unpaired. Okay, so you got the unpaired and paired laryngeal cartilages. Okay, so let's read a little more about each of these. Uh, let's start with thyroid. It is one of the largest. Uh, it is uh, uh, largest uh, cartilage of these and here you can see there is uh, the two ala okay the two ala they kind of meet anteriorly so this is anterior forming a 90 degree angle in males and a 120 degree angle in females so in males you have the adam's apple right because in the males it is more sharp angle that is the laryngeal prominence also they call right if i'm not wrong right <clears throat> it's written here yes laryngeal prominence 90 degree in male 120 degree in female okay so there are two ala and they meet anteriorly okay you got that this is one ala that you're seeing vocal cords are attached to the middle of the thyroid angle yes vocal cords are attached to the middle of the thyroid angle something like this you can say vocal cords are attached to the middle of the thyroid angle so any foreign body will get stuck before the uh, before the vocal cords will get arrested before the vocal cords so where will it be it will be in the it will be above the middle of the thyroid cartilage. So that is why whenever there is a foreign body obstruction, they make a hole, you know, where? Here. In the cricothyroid ligament. Uh, thyroid membrane. So this procedure is called as cricothyrotomy. Okay. So that is the importance of thyroid cartilage. Now let us move on to the next one, guys. The next one we will look at is the cricoid cartilage. Cricoid cartilage is the only cartilage which is a complete ring. Okay, so it is the only cartilage which is a complete ring. So even at the back, it will be completely covered. So back, whatever is there, it is called as lamina. Anteriorly, whatever is there, it is called as apex. Okay, so that is all they have. Oh, sorry, it is called as arch, guys. This is called as arch. Okay, so la lamina at the back uh, and uh, anteriorly, it is uh, forming a narrow. It is narrow. It is forming an arch. Okay, um, then let us move on to epiglottis. Now, epiglottis is leaf-like, whereas epiglottis here, it is leaf-like, okay. It is yellow elastic cartilage. It is yellow. And it is elastic cartilage forming anterior wall of the laryngeal inlet. Yes, this is anterior. So, it is forming the anterior wall of the laryngeal inlet. It is attached to the hyoid bone. With, this is the hyoid bone. It is attached to the hyoid bone, hyoid bone by a hyoepiglottic ligament. So that will divide this epiglottis into suprahyoid epiglottis and infrahyoid epiglottis. Guys, are you understanding? Okay. So there is. Uh, this is the epiglottis, right? A stalk-like process of epiglottis, like you can see here, petiole. It attaches to the thyroid angle, just above the attachment of the vocal. Fold. So, if the vocal folds, let's say, attach here, 
if the vocal folds attach here just above that the epiglottis also attaches to the thyroid angle okay via a stalk like process which is called as the petiole then anterior surface of epiglottis is separated from thyrohyoid membrane so this is the anterior surface of the epiglottis it is separated by the uh, from the thyrohyoid membrane so if this is hyoid bone and this is thyroid cartilage there is a, a thy, uh, thyrohyoid membrane so between the anterior surface of the epiglottis and this thyrohyoid membrane you have a potential space which is filled with fat it is called as pre epiglottic space so where is that here you can see that um, uh, space thyrohyoid membrane is here and here you have a fatty pad this is the pre epiglottic space just uh, guys focus here anterior surface of epiglottis is separated anterior surface of epiglottis <clears throat> is separated from the thyrohyoid membrane and the upper part of the thyroid cartilage by a potential space filled with fat the pre epiglottic space why is this space important because this uh, carcinoma can spread to this place okay so this space may be invaded in the carcinoma of supraglottic larynx <clears throat> or the base of tongue so all about the anterior surface they said okay all about the anterior surface of epiglottis they said now they want to talk about the posterior surface okay so where is the posterior surface here you can see the posterior surface the posterior surface guys is actually concave above and convex below okay so this is forming a bulge called tubercle of epiglottis and this one obstructs the anterior commissure view um when examining the larynx in indirect laryngoscopy this bulge will obstruct the view of the anterior commissure during indirect laryngoscopy how is it going people okay let's continue where are we we are looking at epiglottis isn't it so posterior surface we were looking at so this is the posterior surface guys look at this okay so it is a leaf like structured yellow elastic cartilage leaf like structure this is posterior view okay so it shows several pits it seems which has uh, mucus glands it may also show perforations providing direct communication between laryngeal surface of epiglottis and pre epiglottic space oh that is why all that carcinoma is going into the potential space so what they are saying is this epiglottis may have some perforations and that may allow the carcinoma right uh, it might this these perforations may provide direct communication between the laryngeal surface of epiglottis and the pre epiglottic space supraglottic cancers can spread through them to the pre epiglottic space this is an interesting statement here that they saying the epiglottis will not help in swallowing it is not essential for swallowing it seems and it can be amputated in carcinoma with little aspiration but i was thinking that when a person swallows for the food to go to esophagus uh, which is behind the trachea this epiglottis will fall on this uh, vocal folds and protect the trachea that's what i thought but they are saying this uh, epiglottis are actually not essential for swallowing okay we are done with epiglottis now let's move on to the paired ones arytenoid so where are the arytenoid here pyramid shaped so these are paired yes they are pyramid in shape they have a base the base sits on what on the cricoid cartilage okay and uh, it it has what and all base apex so here you have the base which is sitting on the cricoid cartilage and then you have an apex on the apex what will be sitting the corniculate cartilage yes so other things that you have to know about arytenoids are uh, they have two processes called as muscular processes where the muscles attach and the vocal processes where the vocal cords attach vocal folds they say some people are saying vocal cords okay let's say here you have the arytenoid so here you have the vocal folds okay and some muscles are attached look at that muscles which are attached here you have uh, transverse arytenoid posterior crico arytenoid lateral crico arytenoid thyro arytenoid muscles so many muscles are also attached so what and all are there in arytenoid you have some muscular process and vocal process then you have base and apex okay last we have to look at this corniculate and cuneiform let's look at them corniculate first let's look at corniculate now what are the corniculate guys corniculates are like horns horn they sit on the arytenoid cartilage where on the apex right so they are called as corniculate cartilage of santorini they are paired each articulates with the apex of the arytenoid cartilage forming the horn of the arytenoid cartilage okay so we are done with corniculate there will be two of them remember 
cuneiform cartilage now cuneiform is here you see that where is it it is actually a rod shaped and it is in front of the corniculate cartilage yes here if you have corniculate in front of it you have the cuneiform but this cuneiform is actually within this array epiglottic fold okay so this cuneiform is within this array epiglottic fold and it provides passive support support to the fold so this cu uh, cuneiform is called as cuneiform cartilage of Wrisberg. these are rod shaped situated in the inside or in the ap array epiglottic fold in front of the corniculate cartilage and provides passive support to the fold so we are done with all the nine cartilages of larynx so just remember of these the epiglottis is elastic right and this corniculate and cuneiform are also elastic. So these are having elastic fibrocartilage. Which of those? Epiglottis and corniculate and cuneiform are, what is that? Elastic fibrocartilage. What about these other three? Thyroid, cricoid and arytenoid. Um, they are hyaline cartilages. In arytenoid, the, they are saying the tip of arytenoid also is elastic. Okay. So the tip of arytenoid is also elastic. You just make it green this much. What do you see? So it has both features. Hyaline cartilages, uh, which are those that is thyroid, cricoid and all that, <clears throat> they can undergo ossification. So your thyroid cartilage will become hard and hard as you age, right? <clears throat> they will ossify. And they, uh, this ossification begins at the age of 25 in thyroid. So just remember thyroid, uh, these uh, things will ossify and they will look like foreign bodies on x-ray after some time. Okay, 25 years they will start ossification by 65 years they will complete ossification as yes, let's wind up this video in this video we wanted to look at larynx cartilages totally nine of them are there you have three unpaired and three paired and uh, what else we looked at we looked at this uh, pre-epiglottic space right and we looked at the posterior view where we saw the beautiful shape of the epiglottis leaf shape yes and then we saw the cricoid cartilage also here you can see posteriorly it is having this lamina right this is a complete ring then we saw the arytenoid cartilage the processes and then we saw the muscle and the vocal fold attachment that's all for now in larynx cartilages bye bye